In this next sequence of videos, we're going to work on solving nonlinear equations. And this is something that most of you are reasonably familiar with. For example, if you we were asked to solve the equation x squared plus 3x minus 4, there's two ideas that might occur to you. There are two strategies that occur to me in terms of solving it. The first one would be factoring. In that case, it looks like we can factor out an x minus or x plus 4 and an x minus 1. And if we do that, we get x equals negative 4 or x equals 1. Another possibility, because it's a quadratic, is to use a quadratic formula. And if we do that, we would get our x is equal to minus b, so minus the 3, plus or minus the square root of that squared minus 4 times the a and the c, careful with the negative signs, all over 2. When we do that, this ends up being 9 minus or plus 16 is 25. We're going to have plus or minus 5 halves. And if we're careful about that, we'll have minus 8 halves and plus 2 halves or minus 4 and 1. So two different ways to solve that equation. Because it fit a particular form, it was a polynomial that we could either factor by inspection or that we noted was a quadratic and there's a standard formula we can apply. Let's consider this next equation. Well, we have an exponential e to the negative x, 10 times that equals 7. This is actually also straightforward if you've got your log rules to hand. What we can try to do here is isolate the x. And how do we do that? Well, we bring the 10 over, and once we've done that, we can take the ln of both sides. If we do that, we get ln of e to the negative x. I'll introduce an extra step here that you might skip if you're familiar with it. But the ln and the e are inverse functions, so we simply end up with negative x equals ln of 7 tenths. The two functions here are inverses, so they cancel out. That doesn't affect the right-hand side, so it stays the same way. And we end up with x equals negative ln of 7 tenths. You can do calculator work. You can bring the negative inside, but this is a perfectly correct answer for this equation. Perfect, we're on a roll. How about this next equation? Well, this one turns out to have some issues. It's worth trying this for a second or two, maybe even half a minute, just to see what the complications are in solving this. Give it a try, and then we'll come back. So in general, what most students try to do is they might try to repeat what we did in the last case, and that's fair enough. You might try to isolate the exponential. The problem is there's this second x here. And the problem with that is we can't seem to get rid of it while we're solving for the x in this expression. For instance, if we take ln on both sides now, that doesn't really help. We have negative x equals ln of 7 minus x over 10. But then I have an x on both sides, so that didn't help. Even if I went straight from the beginning and said, oh, there's an x here, well, that's 7 minus 10 e to the negative x. That doesn't help either, because I still have the unknown on both sides of the equation. And there doesn't seem to be any way to isolate the x value. We can't seem to isolate that x because there's two of them in the equation. And that's just the nature of the beast. This equation cannot be solved by hand manipulations. It just can't be. It's too complicated because it has too many x's in different kinds of places. So where does that leave us? Well, it turns out that it's pretty easy to write equations that we actually cannot solve by hand, no matter what kind of manipulations you're familiar with. So do we just give up? Well, absolutely not. If we have 10 e to the minus x plus x equals 7, there are values of x that we can plug in, we expect, that'll give us 7 on the right-hand side. The question is how to find them. It's all about the search. What we're going to introduce is a different way of solving these kinds of problems. That's a numerical method. And the idea behind numerical methods is you know, they're a second choice. If we can solve by hand, we should. But if we have nothing else to fall back on, we can at least get a high accuracy approximate solution. It's never better to use these methods 
if you can sell things by hand, there's a whole pile of reasons for that. There's great numerical methods courses for second year students if you want to take that and dive in deeper. But at the end of the day, if you don't have anything else, the numerical method is what you can fall back on as a way to get an answer to this kind of question. What x's satisfy this equation? As it turns out, our study of linearity that we did before this is going to help us find a way to solve this kind of equation.